For any Xbox or PlayStation codes or cheap games on any platform, use the referral link in the description. It'll take you to G2A.com. Use the promo code CHEZ over there and you'll get yourself 3% cash back. Also, I've got a new merchandise store, hats, hoodies and new tea designs all available right now on the link in the description. Hey guys, welcome to episode number 5 of the Career Mode Road to Glory here on FIFA 17. Thank you again for your continued support on this series. Well over a thousand likes again yesterday and hundreds of comments again. Loads of options for me to have a look at at centre-back, which remains the only real position I think I'm looking to definitely strengthen in in this window. I would be open to perhaps bringing in... Uh, another goalkeeper if we aren't able to uh, bring in a centre-back but centre-back is a main port of uh, concern right now most importantly uh, a couple of well not even a couple of you a number of you would saying don't loan out Navarrete play him so our scout future star will be played as my first team right side midfielder rather than Piero Mingoya pushing forward into this season I'm unsure what to do training wise because I I very rarely do anything with young players on career mode. And in previous years, if you trained a player too young, their physicals wouldn't grow. And I don't want that to happen to Navarrete because his potential for his physicals are outstanding. And I really don't want to stunt his physical growth by training his technicals too soon. You'll have to let me know in the comment section if that's still a thing. If it is, I might wait six months or until he's 17 or 18 before actively you know, going ham with the training on him and hope that uh, just by playing him regularly every single week or as often as I possibly can with regards to stamina, that he will grow off his own back to start off with and then I can start training him. I'm unsure. Like I say, I, I would hate to stunt his growth. So uh, you'll have to let me know in the comment section what the situation is with young players in that situation. Uh, we have a number of uh, players added to the list. Players that have been here for a while. Courtney Howes, still waiting for a scout report on him though. Uh, Robert Pierre, Reese Oxford, Taylor Moore and uh, Regan Paul. Like I say, we're looking to buy, not loan at uh, centre-back now. Added so many more centre-backs onto the list as well. Uh, we have Carl Wimet. He's a uh, free agent currently. I would very much like to know what his uh, individual stats are like. But unfortunately, I can't scout him because my uh, scouts are already too busy elsewhere. So I'm not sure how good he's going to get or be to start off with. And he's 24 years of age. Uh, Jake Clark Salter is 18 years of age and currently at Bristol uh, Rovers. He's someone we could look at. Uh, Mamadou Decore at Bruce Mooch and Gladbach looks half decent. Again, going to have to wait for all these scout reports to come back. Aaron Pierre was recommended to me, as was uh, Eirik Haugen. Apologies if I've butchered that pronunciation. He looks average, though. Uh, Rivaldo Curtsy is a player that's currently at Celtic, and I think that's the same Curtsy that is at uh, Betis in the My Player series, and he's pretty solid there. So if it is the same guy, then I'd be interested in him. Tom Lockyer from Bristol Rovers as well. Another Rovers centre-back that was thrown in the suggestions. Uh... I don't know how to pronounce this. You will have to spell it for me phonetically in uh, the comment section. I'm going to say Wout Fay, but I don't know. I apologise to... Uh, I presume he's Belgian if he plays for Anderlecht. Yeah, I apologise to any Belgians out there. I have no idea how to pronounce that name. Jack Watmo is uh, currently at Portsmouth, was recommended to me. Well, all of these were recommended to me. I've not really gone out and gotten any of these off my own back, to be fair. Uh, Deo or Deot uh, Upamecano. <laughs> Hell of a name. He's French, I think, currently playing at Salzburg. He is French, but if uh, Deot is anything like Payet, then the T is pronounced. Uh, Yalsin Aykan Kaya at um, Osman, Osmanlispor in the Turkish League. Yela Delanga is uh, at Utrecht. Again, waiting to hear back about him. Del Fry from... Well, he's from Middlesbrough. He's currently on loan at Rotherham, so we'd have to wait until next season to, before bringing him in. And then uh, Che Dunkley from Oxford was also recommended to me. They're the centre-backs I'm looking at currently. A number of the other ones you suggested, again, as was the case with the previous episode, they're just out of my price range. We have very limited funds here at Cambridge in season number one. I have my first team scouts out looking for players that are available on a free contract for next season. So when it gets to January, if we can raise some extra funds with cut runs and with uh, player sales, then I might be tempted to go more towards uh, free signings for Season 2 than I am improving on the squad in January for Season 1. But it all depends on how we're getting on in the league. If we're looking like we need help, 
to get promoted, then I will look to strengthen in January there and then. If we look like we're going to be quite comfortable for promotion in season one, then uh, then we'll we'll lean towards getting some pre contracts in. But today we'll be playing uh, Charlton and Notts County, and then tomorrow we'll be Doncaster Luton and transfer deadline day, and then we'll be into the season proper in the lower leagues, so that it doesn't drag on too long in these uh, opening seasons. I'm going to do the normal play three games, but I will also simulate two games in each episode as well. Ordinarily, and as a rule of thumb, throughout all of my series to this point on the channel, I have always played every single game. But after the experience of doing this uh, on FIFA 15, uh, interest in the series really didn't pick up that much until we reached the uh, the upper reaches of the Championship and the Premier League, etc. And whilst this series has gone down phenomenally well so far, I would like to prolong that uh, and keep your interest peaked by uh, getting through these early seasons as quickly as we can. So I'll play three games and simulate two in every episode outside of transfer windows. And then obviously in transfer windows, we'll do two games per episode plus transfer activity as we normally do. So uh, that is how we will work things moving forward. That'll be the League 2 season will be like that. The League 1 season will be like that. And probably the majority of the championship season as well. Providing we can get promoted at the rate that we want to get promoted at. Which hopefully won't be a problem with player growth and just good on pitch performances. We'll have to wait and see. Harry Darling can go out on loan to Swindon though. And I th oh, do I want to do that? Do I want to do that? I think I might stall on that because if we can, if we can't bring in another centre back, I'm going to need Harry Darling at the club. So we'll we'll stall on that for now. But starting at Charlton in the cup, obviously cup runs are fantastic for uh, finances. So if we can generate some extra income from going far in the Football League Cup and in the FA Cup, then that would be absolutely vital. And we'll try and do that, starting with this game at home against Charlton. Do drop the video a like if you enjoy. Subscribe to the channel too and hit that little notification bell to make sure you don't miss out on any further episodes. Uh, check the channel page for anything you may have missed, anything in this series or the Road to Glory on the Ultimate Team side of things of FIFA or my player. And there was a vote actually that went up yesterday with regards a co-op career mode with uh, Kizzle Kicks. We did one last year, we're going to be doing one again this year. So uh, make sure you've gone and you've voted on that as well. But anyway, Charlton up first. Here we go. Barry into Connor Chaplin to Ben Williamson. Could go back to Connor Chaplin. We're waiting for that run, though. Nicely done from Furman, who's arrived. And, uh, yeah, that wasn't quite as impressive as he shot on his right foot in the last episode, was it? Yesterday, smacked one into the back of the net. This time, pulled that one horribly wide. Furman drilled into Chaplin. Takes a very heavy touch. Chaplin into Berry. Pokes that through to Furman. And this time, oh, he's so good on his right foot. His right foot is absolutely incredible. I had a couple of people in the comments section saying that Furman had been a waste of money, that I shouldn't have spent £15,000 a week on him and I should have spent that money elsewhere. But judging by his performance against Carlisle yesterday and ignoring or glossing over the left-footed attempt earlier on, get him on his right and he is a real goal threat. Stunning strike, 1-0 Cambridge. Oh, it's a lovely turn by Jose. He just complete. I was so comfortable there when the ball was played into him, but the turn completely sold me. Well, it didn't take Charlton long to get themselves back on level terms, did it? What, three minutes? Going nowhere, and then one ball in, just spins on the spot and then buries it. Fair play, 1-1. One, one. Free kick in a, an OK position, but I think I'm just going to float it towards the back post. And see what we can do. And maybe Leon Leg can get on the end of this. He did. Mark Roberts could win that. It's centre back to centre back to Medialito to the back of the net. Not necessarily something we will have tried on the training ground, but it works nonetheless. Floated in. Leon Leg nods it across to Mark Roberts, who nods it back into the middle. Great first touch, and then the technique on the volley is very good indeed. Cambridge two, Charlton one. This is quite the cup tie. Nice football from Charlton, this Lee Novak in the box, stands it up, Holmes off the post, I oh, can't get it away, wow, they nearly equalised immediately again, thankfully the woodwork came to my rescue, otherwise it would have been 2-2, this is turning out to be one hell of a cup tie, particularly entertaining to play, even if it is quite frustrating to feel like I'm quite, I feel quite open at the back defensively, they've got a man down, and I could be, oh, I don't have to be sporting and kick the ball out because the referee's going to blow his whistle anyway. He's kind of stumbled to the floor there, Cassie. I'm not sure what he's actually injured, but he's going to have to come off for them and we'll get the ball back from the drop ball. It's Chickson. In oh, they've hit the post again. He hit that so early and so hard. It completely caught me by surprise. Here's Holmes. 
gets the turn in. Oh, he's done me there. That's very good footwork. Into a Nikia Jose, who's looking for his second, but Norris saves. Charlton are not done and dusted yet. They are causing me all sorts of problems. We're going to do well to keep hold of this lead for a second time. Line into Chixon. Chixon trying to find some space for a cross. He's dug that one out, and that's going to be... Oh, no! I thought Mark Roberts had that covered, but no. Nikia Jose gets his second of the game. How's he lost that head of the centre-back three minutes into the second half? Tilt on a back level. I don't know how Mark Roberts hasn't won that header. That's really poor defending. It's 2-2. Two -two. Inside to Crofts. Get the tackle in. Furman's done well. We'll look out wide here to Connor Chaplin and then try and get it across here to Ben Williamson. The chance to win the game late on. Ben Williamson! Wow. Wow. How can you be that But Well, I mean, he's 58 rated. I guess that's how he can be that bad. Again, it's back to Novak. Could get it through. Mark Roberts gets the tackle in, but apparently that's a foul, if you say so. And it definitely wasn't anywhere near there either. Taking the free kick quickly. Cross with a shot. Bradley Halliday with a great block. Trying to get it away, but Cross has drilled it into the back of the net. We go 3-2 down in stoppage time. It looks like Charlton might be knocking us out of the Football League Cup. Pretty sure A, it wasn't a foul, and B, it wasn't anywhere near there. We get a good block in, can't clear the lines, and then he's just smacked it into the bottom corner. Looks like we might be going out. All over the top. Up goes Mark Roberts, good header. Osadebe brings it down, but there goes the final whistle. Well, as soon as I, as soon as I mentioned at the beginning of the episode, cup runs will be great for finances. We go and uh, we go and lose to higher league opposition. It has to be said, Charlton are in League One above us, but still frustrating to go out in that manner. Never mind, we might get some money from that cup game, but definitely not going to be getting as much money from the Football League Cup as I might have liked. Transfer offer for Elliot Omazuzi, a player I wasn't thinking about letting go. But I might be willing to let go if they give me 200 odd thousand. Uh, mm, that's a lot to ask, but we'll see what they say. He's only 27, but we could we could do better. Still stalling on this uh, Harry Darling deal. And I'm actually very close to rejecting that as uh, things stand right now. But we'll leave it there for the time being. We might need to readdress the right-back situation, although we do have two right-backs already at the club, with Bradley Halliday in on loan and uh, and the young guy, uh, Josh Emmanuel, there we go, Emmanuel in on loan from Ipswich. My brain just completely died there. Um, to be fair, Jake Clark's Alter looks OK. Only 57 strength, though, doesn't fill me with confidence, but he looks all right. I don't know what his potential is like, but 61 rated at... Uh, 18 years of age I'll throw in a bid why the hell not let's offer them he's only 18 and he's a squad rotation player and he's not on much week let's offer them £200,000 and just see what they say up next is a game against Notts County I'm actually playing Jonathan Lecco at striker in this one to add a little bit more pace alongside the strength of uh, Uche so we'll have to wait and see how we get on in this one not only a, a few days after the game against Charlton, so a number of other players weren't fully fit. But we have the strength in depth. Hopefully, we can get ourselves a win in the second game of the League 2 season to go hand-in-hand -hand with the win against Carlisle yesterday. Manuel. Poke that there for Lecco. Manuel's actually kept the run going, but I don't really want to use him in that situation. Also, Debe into Connor Newton. I want to get this around the corner to Uche if I can. And maybe play it back to Connor, which is what we've done. And he's passed the defender, Connor Newton, in the box. Chance to give us a 1-0 lead, and he does exactly that. Very well tucked away in front of the travelling Cambridge United fans. It's Cambridge 1, Notts County 0. Nice finish, that. I was slightly nervous of cutting that too far across the goal, like we did with Furman in the last game. But Connor Newton able to find that far corner. 1-0. To Osadebe, through there to Ikpeatsu. Ute will poke it out wide looking for Harrison Dunk and we'll look to return the ball to Ute. Or it could be Lecco. It's also Debe with the header. And over the top of the bar it goes. It's football. He can go out on the run. He's carrying a knock, but I could slot through Jonathan Lecco here. And we could be in for two. And exactly that has happened. Jonathan Lecco runs in behind the goal and will probably celebrate in exactly the same way that Connor Newton did with the same cutscene. Cambridge United two. 
Notts County nil. A lovely weighted through ball for Jonathan Lecco, who's buried it in the bottom corner. Nicely done. We're dominating this one. This is a refreshing change of pace after that difficult Charlton game. Pace of Lecco just too much and then slots it home. Two goal advantage. Nelson with a turn in the middle. It's Jonathan Forte. Out wide to Dickinson. Into Stead. It's not Stead. It's O'Connor. It's very not tidily turned home. Notts County have won back. That's a very good move. Nobody tracked the man in the middle and it's just a simple finish. At the start of the second half, Notts County are back in it. Let's not throw this one away like we did against Charlton, shall we? Payazu to Barry Court. He's in a little bit of space. Barry Court with a shot well blocked by Lang. Be a corner. I've moved Leco to right wing and took Pierre Mingoya off because he was still carrying that knock. Keeper's come to punch that. It's going to drop to Mark Roberts. Not the man you want it to drop to. Osadebe just not got the space there to do anything with it. But Uche can have a pop from the edge of the box. But it's gone wide of the target, unfortunately. Just over 20 minutes left for either us to win or for them to equalise. Corner for County, 10 minutes to go. O'Connor to stand it up into the middle. They brought on Campbell for Duffy. But we get the corner away. Only as far as a borer, though. Who? <sighs> Keeper wasn't sure. He dived for it, but it went wide of the post, thankfully. It's a debate to court. Play it over the top looking for Dunk. It wasn't quite played. Oh, what is that touch? What is that touch? Final whistle goes. Thankfully, that touch doesn't cost us anything. If that was Dunk being played through to equalise or to go and score a winner, I would have been livid. Thankfully, we were already 2-1 up. Victory by two goals to one for the second League Two game in a row. Unfortunately, sandwiched uh, in between was a defeat in the League Cup against uh, Charlton. But never mind. We should be... In the reckoning at the top of the table, still obviously very early days, two games down, 44 to go. Two more to come in tomorrow's episode as well. And uh, then, like I say, we'll be up to five games per episode after that. Three played, two simulated for uh, the first couple of seasons of this series. We are third in the table, though. Uh, we'll continue to train just these players. Ah, oh, Mingoya's going to be out injured, isn't he? Okay. That's what that email was. How long are you out for, Piero? Three weeks. All right. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to reject this, actually. I'm just going to keep hold of Harry, darling. Right, so what we're we looking to do now in the transfer window. Still bring in a centre-back. Uh, let's train, though, and I will actually throw someone else in here. Who shall we train? Um, I want to train Navarrete, but like I say, I don't want to stunt his growth if that is a thing that is still a thing, if you know what I mean. So you'll have to let me know in the comment section, and I will act upon that uh, once I get your feedback. But in the meantime... Let's throw um, let's throw Connor Chaplin in there, actually. Let's improve his finishing because he has been okay for me so far, but he hasn't excelled. Hopefully Ute can continue to grow well throughout this series, though. But I think that's going to bring today's episode to a close. Will Norris getting closer and closer to being 64 rated now, 63 and a half-ish. Good growth from him so far this season. We will do a squad report or we'll do squad reports periodically throughout the series. But uh, how long have we got left in the window now? Two weeks? Two and a half weeks. All right, well, we'll go as far as Doncaster then, and we'll see if anything else happens, because we've still got plenty of scout reports to come back on centre-backs, and uh, they might come back between now and then. We've had one come back for Haugen, and I think we've got a few more there as well, which we do. Barnett have said they don't reckon Omazuzi is worth 200 grand, and they've stopped going after him. All right, fair enough. Um, uh no, sorry, uh, Eric, but you are going nowhere near my starting lineup or even anywhere near my team. Uh, Joshua Bitter. <laughs> Again, we can probably do better. Marion Saar, he's probably expensive. £575,000, £8,600 a week wage wise, but he does look very good. So I would be interested. Oh, he's only recently joined Wolfsburg. Brilliant. Well, I'll leave him on the shortlist then. <laughs> the one that I decide I do want to go for and he's just moved and I can't actually go in for him. Right, Ducore. Oh, he's slightly better than the other two. Sar is the best of the three, but he's only 18. All right, we'll throw a bit in for we'll throw a bit in for Ducore. He's loan listed, but oh, recently joined the club and won't move again. Great. All right, well, we'll look elsewhere. Bristol Rovers rejected the £200,000 bid for Jake Clark Souter, so I will throw in a £300,000 bid for him, and we'll see what happens there. As of yet, no other emails between now 
and the, or between previous and the game against Doncaster, though we should get another couple of uh, scout reports back, I hope, between now and the uh, game, and we have done at least a handful. Let's have a look at these ones then, shall we? We have Che Dunkley. Now, is he any good? Currently at Oxford. He was in his 20s, wasn't he? Yeah. Oh, we could probably do better than Che Dunkley. All right. Uh, Dale Fry. He was out on loan currently, but does look pretty good. We will keep him on the transfer list or on the watch list. And uh, we might make a move for him next season. Jack Watmo. Meh, I think, is uh, probably my response to him. Tom Lockyer. That's more like it. Expensive, but do very much like the look of Tom Lockyer. He's on £4,300 a week. One of the big stars at the club. Uh, it would cost a lot to get him away, but I, he does look very, very good, actually. £4,300 a week. I don't know what he'd want wage-wise if he was coming to me. Probably a pay rise of some description. And Aaron Pierre is at Wickham. And, well, his technicals... He's ta he's tackling is okay, but the rest of his technicals are absolutely diabolical. He's so bad on the ball. It's just not going to suit my play style, I don't think. Sorry, Aaron. But uh, we're going to look elsewhere again. All right, well, that's going to bring today's episode to a close, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Again, please do continue to leave me suggestions in the comments section uh, down below, and we will uh, look into them. But like I say, there are, there are a handful here that we're actually just going to back out of that we don't think we're going to go for. And I may end up having to loan a cent back in, but I'd like to buy someone if I possibly can. Still a number of scout reports left to come back. So for now, we will leave it there and resume tomorrow. Drop the video a like if you enjoyed, subscribe to the channel too if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time.